Good morning, everybody. Welcome to week 12 of our, um, of our class on emotional wholeness. I hope all of you are doing well, rested well, and uh, ready for your day ahead. And for those of you who may be... Good morning. Good morning. Maybe at different parts of the world. Um, we pray that this will help you sleep well too. Um, Great. So we are into our uh, lesson into emotional wholeness. And um, the last week, uh, we had begun to touch upon how we continue to stay in emotional wholeness. And part of that was to, um, uh, what, what we looked at the last week was uh, uh, the, the conquest of the mind and how we can <clears throat> we overcome the battles that come in our mind, the kind of thoughts that we may have, um, the kind of imaginations we hold on to, the strongholds that uh, become a part of us, <clears throat> the information, um, whatever continues to stir us, uh, what is it that we could, uh, how is it that we could battle with that, combat with that? And uh, we looked at some certain disciplines on what we need to do to, uh, uh, to bring about the conquest of the war that's happening in the mind is one we spoke about taking every thought captive of being able to pull down, demolish every thought, every argument, every imagination that is against uh, the knowledge of God, pull it down and have our minds renewed by the word of God is being the renewing of the mind is the ability to reject these wrong ideas, wrong thoughts that are not aligned to God and his ways and uh, come to um, uh, a mind that is renewed as we saw in Philippians 4.8 where we see seeing um, to, to have thoughts of, that are true, noble, just, pure, lovely, <clears throat> and of good report. And the last point that we looked at is being able to see everything through God's promises and based on who God is and uh, keep aside all negative thoughts that come to our mind and discipline ourselves to thinking positively as according to the word of God. So that's where we stopped last time. Today we're going to look at another part of our selves to help us to journey and stay in emotional wholeness, which is um, the flesh, the part of us um, that is uh, that 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 we the, the part of us that has desires. Okay, so we're going to be looking at uh, a fresh chapter on crucifying the flesh, and I'm on page forty-four. For those of you who would like to follow along. Uh, we would also be um, focusing on <clears throat> a few notes from another book that's laying the ax to the root, <clears throat> which I'm sure in the beginning of your semester uh, last year, there, there was um, a detailed um, um, session on that, uh, bringing about how we need to take the uh, uh, take certain of um, attitudes or, or things that we may be going through some of those wrong seeds that that we may be harboring inside those fruit of the flesh, the, getting rid of those uh, fruit of the flesh. Um, and we will be going through some part of it today, not too much in detail, but some part of it uh, today. So uh, let's start with uh, understanding what do we mean by the word flesh. So the uh, an important uh, aspect of being emotionally whole, as we did see, was dealing with the mind, the uh, our emotions, uh, as well as our um, will. And today we're going to be looking at how do we crucify the, the flesh. So what do we mean by, by the flesh? So we live in a body and our body has multiple desires. And some of these desires are good and legitimate, but we do find that some of these can be wrong and it can be sinful, it can be ungodly. 
So, uh, you know, some of the good ones that you would see are, you know, yes, you need to eat, you may be hungry, <clears throat> it, you may be tired, so you need to rest, uh, you need to catch up on some good rest, which can be sleep. And uh, just as much as those are legitimate desires, we also have fleshly desires. And by the word flesh, what do we mean? We mean that uh, the, the desires that are ungodly or evil or the sinful passions that um, come uh, that that we that are manifested inside of us is what we refer to when we say flesh so it is the physical part of us um, now the all our desires and our passions are integrated or quite um, uh, aligned quite enmeshed with what what is in our souls as well you know so there may be certain things that are conceived in our minds and that gets and that is seen out in our desires okay last week we did see the scripture on james 1 14 where we read that we are tempted because we are moved by our own sinful nature our, our, our or our own sinful desires and we see that these sinful desires or the sinful nature comes from or is generated from our own flesh or our own soul and that's what moves us and that's what tempts us because there is a desire that is conceived within us or a sinful passion that is that is conceived within us that leads us to sin um so how does what we're going to look at is how does our flesh relate to emotions and uh, let's take an a, a scripture on in first peter 2 verse 11 and it reads like this beloved i beg you as sojourners and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul so here the word fleshly lust makes the reference to what we were talking about that is the evil desires or the passions um, of the flesh so what the what the scripture helps us to see is that when we give in to these fleshly lusts it harms and damages our soul it harms and damages our mind, our will, our emotions. And when these desires, sinful desires come up, it creates conflicts and problems in our minds or in our will and in our emotions. And, um, uh, and we, we could probably have multiple examples to understand this. That is, how does our fleshly passions relate to our emotions? So uh, we we'll look at maybe one example of, uh, uh, let's say, someone who is ad addicted to um, uh, lust or, or, let's say, pornography, uh, or even, let's say, someone who's addicted to something else, maybe, let's say, a substance like, an al like alcohol. When the person yields to it, it not only satisfies the desire of the flesh, that is when they consume alcohol or when they are a consumer of pornography, there is a temporary satisfaction of the flesh or, or the desire of the flesh seems to be satisfied. But it also has the potential to cause problems in the mind. Like uh, through the day, they can't think of anything else but getting to their next drink or uh, these pictures that or images that one has been uh, uh, yeah, one has yielded to continues to linger in the mind so much that they may not be able to concentrate or um, every time there is there is a uh, maybe the person is you know maybe just seeing a, an ad in the picture or maybe passing by um, uh, let's say a, a, a shop where there's alcohol sold there is immediately a sense of um, anxiety or a sense of uh, difficulty that comes up 
uh, or you know they uh, uh, someone who's addicted to pornography can't look at women properly because these emotions towards these women become affected and these war against the soul and they have attitudes and um, thoughts that are are quite uh, unhealthy and quite warped in itself so you see that a desire that is yielded to those sinful desires that are yielded to not only causes an issue in the flesh that you know you sin in your flesh but it also was against the soul it affects the mind it affects your emotions it affects your ability to concentrate to think to judge to have wisdom in things so um that's the relation that we see between the mind and the uh, the flesh and and the will uh, yes Siddhant, i think you've raised your hand is it for a question Siddhant? okay i suppose it's maybe a mistake okay all right okay that's fine no problem okay so are we are we clear up until here may i go on because i have heard no voice up until now so i'm a little concerned if there are He's people at the back side yeah okay thank you thank you shikma thank you avni thank you anita okay great okay so let's let's move on now we 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 also so let's understand what are some of these works of the flesh what is this that we are talking about when we're saying um, work of the flesh so what does it mean we're looking at how is it being expressed in the soul some so something that that uh, that there is a desirous passion that comes about and how does it being how is it being expressed in the soul so let's look at um the verse from Galatians 5 19 to 23 and if you look at that entire verse you may see some words that are written in brackets okay and uh, that's what refers to the uh, uh, to the to the uh, to the uh, passion in itself to the fleshly desire in itself okay uh, or what what comes out as the behavior so let's just read through that and uh, we'll we'll uh, probably look into some of that so it says now the works of the flesh are evident that means what comes out of the flesh is very evident which are adultery fornication uncleanness lewdness idolatry sorcery hatred contentions jealousies outbursts of wrath selfish ambitions dissensions heresies envy murders drunkenness revelries and the like of which i tell you beforehand just as i told you in time past that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So we'll just uh, put a pause over there, and then we will we will go ahead to for us to look at what are these works of the flesh, or what are the fruit of the flesh. So when someone is taken over by any of this, I mean any of these conditions or these works that you see, or are living in um, um, in subjection to these. Uh, acts we we see that it it it, uh, it kind it turns out into be um, something th that moves in like a deed or an act that that comes into as the flesh and you know there are a lot of uh, uh, examples that are given here now apart from this we also notice and we also see that there are other kinds of um, works of the flesh that we see okay and some of this uh, the the list is given here and I'll, I'll just take some time to read it uh, for you for those of you who are not able to view the the notes okay the fruits of the flesh the other things that we see which may not be brought about in the list is anger arrogance being argumentative blaming others bitterness controlling condescending cowardice complaining critical cunning cynical demanding depressive dishonest dissatisfaction 
discontentment, deceptive, envy, greed, hatred, indifference, intolerance, insecurity, irresponsibility, jealousy, judgmental, lust, manipulative, negativity, pessimism, prejudice, pride, resentment, revengeful, rude, sarcasm, secretive, self-centeredness, selfishness, skeptical, stingy, suspicion, unforgiving, untrusting, unsympathetic. So we see that all of this, um, or all, all these works of the flesh, or these fruits of the flesh, is what is when someone gives in to what is generated in the flesh. Now what we see is these fruit of the flesh not just harms you as a person, but it also harms others that you are relating with. It not just harms you uh, and, and what ensues in your behavior, but it also harms others. So an example that we can look up is in uh, Acts chapter 8. And we see over here, so often when we look at this list, we say, OK, this, this is not a list that, um, that um, uh, you know, as a believer that uh, I face. OK, but let's just look at the Bible and an example here, uh, which is found in Acts 8. And we see that, um, you know, in Acts 8, where Philip um, is in the city of Samaria and he's preaching Christ to the uh, to the multitudes over there and uh, there's a great work that's being done of the done there you know the unclean spirits are are um, uh, uh, are being uh, are being cast out there are miracles that are happening and there is a lot and because of all that's happening there's a lot of joy that's there in that city but in the same city, there is this man um, called Simon, and he's known as Simon the Sorcerer. And before he heard the, the he heard and he saw what uh, Philip was um, teaching and doing, he was previously practicing sorcery in that city. And a lot of people in Samaria were very astonished by the kind of work that he was doing and uh, they, they had even labeled him as uh, someone who was um, who was great and they all uh, the scripture says they all gave him heed from the least to the greatest saying this man has a great power of uh, of god okay and they heeded him because they they totally revered and stood in astonishment at uh, the kind of work that um, he was doing um, but when Philip came in, you know, uh, and and sh and brought about the message of the gospel and the name of Jesus Christ and the things that were being done because of the name, Simon also was one who became a believer, and he was also baptized, and he in fact joined, continued with Philip, um, uh, and was amazed uh, because of the miracles that were done. Now, when um, uh, when 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 Simon began to see that uh, there was so much of power in what uh, 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 Philip was doing, this is what he says, and I'm and I want to read this from uh, verse 18, chapter 8, verse 18. It says, "Now when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Spirit was given." he offered them money so uh, so they were all laying hands on them so that they would receive the holy spirit so that's when he goes in and says and he says saying verse 19 give me this power also that anyone on whom i lay hands may receive the holy spirit but peter said to him your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of god could be purchased with money you have neither part nor portion in this matter for your heart is not a right in the sight of God. Repent therefore of this, your wickedness, and pray God if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. So you see, even though Simon believed and came to, um, uh, to, to heeding what, what was happening, he, in his heart, there was uh, the work of the flesh. He wanted what Simon had, it, uh, sorry, what uh, Philip and Peter had so that he could also do great things. So the intent of his heart was, was, uh, was not right. The 
of his heart was was maybe fame or uh, or the fact of of just being able to be great remember he was a man who who held greatness there and that didn't leave you know even though maybe the spirit changed the the soul and the fleshly desire came about in such a way that it played on his mind on his emotions to get what philip and peter had so he could also be more effective and we see how um peter responds to this and says repent of this um uh, you have neither he says your heart is not right at the sight of god so we do see so it, it's just an example for us to see that what we can see what are the works of the flesh not just affects our flesh it's not just tempting us thing but then it also was against our soul our very mind and our uh, our will and our emotions as well okay um now uh, as we as we understand this works of the flesh we we need to look at how that there can be some of this that's been sown into our lives um maybe at a very probably uh, at 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 an early age or as as you are growing up and so that's why we you know if you look at the next section of it we are uh, really focusing on you know what this entire analogy that it makes on seeds and roots and fruits so when there is a small seed that that is um uh, you know a, a seed that is put in a conducive environment brings about a fruit right and uh, we need to recognize that there are when there are wrong seeds that are sown you are going to be dealing with the wrong fruits and and the root that is going to take a hold is also going to be going to be wrong so to know that there there can be small seeds of uh, anger of hate of rejection of uh, resentment that may take root in us these seeds will take root in us and finally it continues to bear that very same of its kind so especially when we see um you know in earlier earlier probably in the days of uh, uh childhood we 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 understand that we may not have had many much of control on what kind of takes takes uh, is sown into into us you know through the kind of situations that happen there can be a seed of discouragement it can be a seed of envy there can be a seed of a low self esteem of negativity but as we grow as we mature we do have a better understanding and a better sense of control on what we allow inside us and we are at a place of responsibility and being careful and mindful to ensure that only that which is good gets sown and nurtured in our lives so uh, it is to one recognize what are the kind of seeds that are being sown in our hearts because this is what really takes root and this is what grows into um into bearing the the wrong kind of fruit so even in scripture um there are a lot of uh, scripture that actually brings forth this comparison where it says the soil is like um our, our heart is like the soil okay and the person is like a a, a plant that is bearing that fruit and um, uh, so that there is this the scripture in Matthew 7:15 to 20 where it talks about how you identify who pe people who are false or those who come with a false teaching and and that's the same example that is given over here so let me read that out okay uh, Matthew chapter 7 verse 15 to 20 it says beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are ravenous wolves um you will know them by their fruits do men gather grapes from thorn bushes um from thistles or figs from thistles even so every good tree bears good fruit but a bad tree bears bad fruit a good tree cannot bear bad fruit nor can a bad tree bear good fruit every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire therefore by their fruits you will know them so it is only in the manifestation 
of your actions and behavior do you really understand what lies within the heart of man within within the depths of man so within the fleshly uh, within the carnal or within the fleshly man even in the parable of the sower again the heart is uh, referred to as the soil that god's word being the seed and how it bears fruit in our lives so what is it whatever is sown into our lives it's only that which bears fruit so when you see a manifestation of the flesh it indicates a bad tree it indicates something that is not right within like for example if uh, you know for for those of you who may have fruit bearing uh, trees in fact we have a um, uh, you know we have a curry leaf uh, tree here and we do find there are times that the leaves are very very poorly um uh, very poorly they have spots on them they aren't as green and as fresh and you know that whatever is in the root is not the right thing so you need to you know cut that off maybe uproot it and probably put a better grafting on it and so that's what it shows that there are if uh, any kind of a bad seed is something that will will bring about a problem fruit or a pro or a problem uh, root so uh, to 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 first of all identify that that is what works in us and um, just like peter talks to simon and says you know uh, 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 your heart is not right in this and that's what we need to ask the lord to to cut off to get rid of those wrong seeds that have been sowed in if that is not dealt with we will we will begin to see that uh, uh, it is going to affect us as well as those around us so it's not just the behavior that needs to be bandaged but it is to really know the attitude of the heart uh, because you know scripture says the heart is the wellspring of life from there it com comes the wellspring of life so we we need to be clear as to not just what is manifested as a result of the flesh but what is it that we are harboring inside and Another example that we see is in Hebrews 12, 14 to 17. And this specifically talks about um, the, the root of bitterness. And so let's, uh, let's read that. Can I, can I pause and ask somebody to read it so that I also know that people uh, on the other side of my screen is, uh, um, is also awake with me? So Hebrews chapter 12, verses 14 to 17. Is there anyone who would like to read that, please? Ma'am, shall I re read it? Go ahead. Go ahead. Hebrews Rupa. 12, 14 to 17. Yes. Pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble. And by this many become defiled, lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Asia, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. For you know that afterward, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place for repentance, though he sought it diligently with tears. Thank you. Thank you, Rupa. Yeah, so we see that in this scripture, it talks about verse 15. It says, lest any root of bitterness spring up cause trouble. So it says, verse 14 gives you a context saying, pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord looking carefully. So it says in your relation with others, as you continue your interaction with, with others, you know, pursue that peace lest what happens lest any root of bitterness springs up and causes uh, trouble and and there is another example of esau that's given up given again in another context of what was birthing within him the kind of seeds that was there within him and you know for that morsel of food maybe it was uh, it was it was it was it was another seed that's there that got him to, to do what was wrong and selling his own birthright okay so it says be watchful whatever the root that can that can um, uh, 
take uh, the sorry the the seed that can take root is what you need to be careful of and here it says the root of bitterness springing up causing trouble and by this many become defiled which means not just you but then others around you so uh, there there as we see this root of bitterness we could we could look at it as as every other um, seeds of anger or any kind of seed that we we allow to take root which which does surface out as a, a behavior so being careful to know that whatever we sow in is only what is going to bear fruit and the best time to uproot something is at its nascent stage or like you say you know nip it at its bud and you know, right at the beginning is when you uproot it I mean, here it is uprooted from the roots right right from the beginning so it doesn't take root in you and bear the bear a bad fruit okay now what i'd like to i'm just looking i think there are a couple of questions here uh, anita you've asked is this list in the bible or is it the deep understanding of a verse i think you are referring to the um the other um uh, works of the flesh that we spoke about it is all taken from the bible and but they are they don't come in from this verse they come in from other multiple verses that uh, that that's there you know where it talks about how uh, uh, how there are different ways of of um, uh, what takes root in us so if you look through the new testament you will find um uh, scriptures that speak against being angry uh, speak against being deceptive of being jealous of having pride of having uh, uh of of lusting of being selfish of being uh, uh, of being self preserving of oneself so this is all taken from different parts of the parts of scripture all of this being negative attitudes that that seem to be warring against the uh, warring against our soul okay all right now what what we're going to be doing today is we are going to be um, looking at, at at we were just taking four examples of um of laying the axe to the root of of self of jealousy of pride and of lust and we will take two today and two uh, in the next uh, next uh, week as well okay because i think this is really important for us to see how they get manifested inside of us now as scripture says how do we get rid of the root is to lay the axe to the root and this is what john the baptist you know when uh, before he began to introduce uh, uh, jesus he announced that you know jesus would come and lay axe to the root of the trees and and uh, rid us of everything that bears its bad fruit and uh, you know cleanse us burn us refine us with the um, with the fire of the Holy Spirit, and we read that in Matthew three verses ten to twelve. Could somebody please read that verse, Matthew three verses ten to twelve? Shall I read, ma'am? Go ahead, Abni. Uh, Matthew chapter three verse ten to twelve says, "And even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire." I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean us, clean out his threshing floor, and gather his wheat into the barn, but he will burn up the shaft with unquenchable fire. Amen. Okay, so uh, it shows us very clearly that we need to uproot that which is not bearing fruit, or rather, have the axe. Um, the axe must be laid to the root. So the every tree that does not bear good fruit, if you look at this entire verse, everything. Um, what are the things that represent the flesh here? It is the bad fruit. And the verse twelve, it says, you know, you, you will gather the wheat into the barn, but the chaff will be burnt away, and that's what needs to be burnt away with the power of the Holy Spirit. And we are going to be looking at two uh, 
um, uh, two specific uh, uh, areas today. And we will, like I said, we will look at two other areas. And as we go through this, something that you need to, uh, you know, we need to humbly look at is to see whether these wrong seeds have been put into our lives or are we operating from of these um, these these seeds of things that have borne fruit because we will begin to see that it does manifest in our behavior and in the way that we respond so this is a it's a it's a good check for us to see this so we're going to be looking at two um, of those uh, that is the self as well as uh, jealousy okay um, now when we when we think about the self okay um a lot of times uh, if we are not careful we will be motivated by ourself by the self rather than than the holy spirit so even as a believer you know we may have a desire to love god to glorify god um but then it can get tainted with uh, with a way that that wants us to promote ourselves okay promote ourselves by name or by power or by influence or a need to be recognized for who we are for our gifts or for our talents um or for whatever we may we may have and <clears throat> the scripture says that the holy spirit always wants to glorify christ okay and when we take that position we rob the lord of his glory and uh, the the fact is that you know none of us may really admit to the truth that it is the self that is motivating us we, so we may be very well meaning but uh, to really come down to the root of it to allow god to search us and to really look into the deeper parts of us into our inner beings to find out if we are operating of the self or it is it is the holy spirit that that is operating in us because sometimes there is such a fine line it is so subtle that we may not even be able to recognize it a scripture says in uh, john 3:6 that all what is born of the flesh or what is born of the self is the self and what is born of the spirit is spirit so they are they are very different in its origin okay so what is born of the self cannot move into what is born of the spirit okay and um, it it very clearly says that uh, whatever is done in the flesh is something that displeases the lord and we we read that the last week also so when we sow to the flesh um what are we going to do we will reap only ruin we will only reap corruption and what is done by the self what is done by by our flesh does not have any permanence it's it's not there to stay uh, within us so let's look at a few manifestations of the root of the self so how do we know if we have a root of the self in us um and we're going to be discussing some of this and these can these may include even certain attitudes that we have certain thinking certain behaviors that indicate that there is an underlying root uh, uh, root of of the self that is very predominant in us so when we identify these manifestations um we need to ask the lord to lay the axe to um lay the axe to the root of our self in our lives okay so we will we will look through a few and um uh, you know and as I'm, as we are learning this let's come to a place of um, of identifying if this is what if if this really speak to us so the first one is what we see as promoting ourselves okay and what does this mean this means the desire to be liked or to be known uh by others okay and uh so i think a good question to ask ourselves is um um uh why 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 is it why are we doing the the maybe the activities or the things that we are doing 
what is it that really pushes us to do something so there is this difference that is being that is desiring to be good at something or excelling at something at what one does and the difference of desiring some fame or recognition because of that so it's important to do things in excellence but it is also necessary to see what is driving it is the motivation fame or is the motivation recognition so the underlying issue is whether the motivation when you're doing something it whether it is the motivation of promoting yourself a desire that you know people know you people know what you do or is it the the interest that uh interest in working for god in glorifying god and working for his kingdom okay because scripture brings about in john uh, 5 41 it says i do not receive honor from men and this is this is what uh, jesus was addressing to the to the leaders of his time okay and pointed to them that they were very eager to receive honor for for themselves rather than that which comes from god so you know so the uh, the scripture shows us here that we need to come to a place where you know even in G- in as as jesus has shown in his ministry and in his example that we do not need to receive honor from men if we need to be completely clear and honest to ourselves that um, uh, you know how many of us uh, you know are are okay not to feel that okay so we should so what it's saying here is you know we need to seek our hearts to see if we are walking in the self or we are walking free from the self and are we looking for uh, an uh, an appreciation from god or are we looking at appreciation from men when our desire is only for uh, you know for our appreciation or affirmation from god and it does not have any a uh, desire or root that we should get it from from men then we know that our hearts are free from the self so the question that we need to ask ourselves is what is it that's motivating me to do this what uh, so even if i if, even if i presented badly or even if i presented wrong Uh, or if i presented excellent excellently well what is it that motivates motivates us so we need to ask ourselves what glory is it that we are seeking is it the lord's glory or is it is it our own uh, and uh, we we do see that this thing about promoting oneself is very prevalent uh outside in the world as well as in in our min- in in ministry as well you know often we see that people become uh very concerned about having their names maybe in their ministries or becoming prominent of who they are um you know or even to uh, become very self seeking to know you know which ministry or which minister is more anointed than the other and the self is what seems to become much more dominant so it it's uh, it is to really reflect and to look at whose honor are we seeking is it the honor that comes from god or is it or are we so preoccupied in uh, feeding ourselves um to to what what we would like uh, have within us so whatever is done must be done with the intent of glorifying god so the first one a manifestation of the self is um promoting oneself the second one that we can look at is when we want to be known as someone who has done great things who has accomplished great things that is have a selfish ambition you know that we have an ambition to promote ourselves and we see in scripture in philippians 2 verses 1 to 4 it talks paul warns us that nothing should be done out of Uh, conceit or selfish ambition verse 3 it says let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit but in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than himself so this implies that we cannot do things for god and at the same time be motivated by selfish ambition it is that 
ambition is 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 the desire to be known as someone who has accomplished many things for god you know we we do see that god does have many plans for us or things that he wants us to do for his kingdom um but in in these efforts for the kingdom if the motivation is to have a name for ourselves instead of making him known then we see that we are motivated by this um the the concept of this self called a selfish ambition so our what is our motivation it is to be to have a desire to even as you're ministering to people irrespective of whether they know who we are um or what we do it is uh, that that we that we do it because we're doing it for the love of Christ so maybe a question that we ask uh, ourselves to really check on this is um you know when i'm when i'm thinking of my ministry or when i when the when the dream that i have about maybe my ministry who takes the pedestal there who's the important one there is it does god seat on the throne of that dream is seated on the throne of that dream or is it i who have um is is it i who have it there uh, and and i think you know often we do sometimes hear that um, you know especially when when ministers do testify they say you know i prayed and uh, someone someone got delivered or someone got healed or you know so the emphasis is more on the self than it is on the one who has healed the, the god who has healed um and uh, uh, and the focus is is put over there so so the so is it true that even in spite of that you know god will not heal you know people god will still heal god will heal because he continues to confirm his word and because of the virtue of his word all that he his wills will will be accomplished however you know we need to check our hearts to see where is this being originated so what do we do when selfish ambition springs up uh what do we do it is it is to have a humble mind and to be able to regard others as better than ourselves so to be able to give preference uh, and look out for the interest of others uh, and their well-being and their benefits and their miracles because god is the one who works so you are there to promote and to bring about god rather than uh be noticed as someone who is who is important okay um can is there any questions up until now i think we have a question yes pastor yes sri kumar yes go ahead thank you uh, pastor i just want to know um uh, as we are discussing on this self so i just want to know when the bible uh, um uh, um says about the uh, paul the paul did uh mighty things and uh, peter about peter it says that so the name is mentioned there i'm just saying that you know or the paul and john went and um, uh, did a miracle in the in that near uh, the gate of beautiful or beautiful so uh, when that name is associated with that miracle to is it is it is it um, uh, how we should consider those things like uh, is it their glorifying self or is it something which the bible is teaching us that the specific specific miracle god did through them how we have to take because okay. as you said many times when we when we say that uh, you know the uh, because uh, that, that's certain man of god prayed and that healing happened so when every time that that, uh, that is it is it glorifying that man of god or is it glorifying god like how i ask you that the peter name is there uh, mention is there paul's name name is mentioned there so how we uh, how we differentiate this thing thank you pastor okay so so the bible gives um uh, i mean uh, god requires instruments he requires his people his disciples as his instruments to do his will and to bring about his glory so we are here as vessels contain containing the glory and the power of god okay and when you read those um uh, those details about the people that are there i think number one it is so it is also an example for us to know that god worked through men of god worked god worked through his vessels and that's how he 
uh, he he shows himself out to other people. There are, of course, very many ways that God reveals himself directly, like how God uh, revealed himself directly to uh, to Saul, and then you know he got he was converted to Paul. So God does reveal himself directly. God also uses us, his people, or his people, to uh, bring about glory to his name. And so so that's what gets is is shown here. Now, are they having glory to themselves? So if you read through in scripture, all of them in different ways have always brought about, you know, even Peter, when he talks about um, uh, uh, Peter and John, you know, they go in and they say, silver and gold have I none, but what as I have, I give unto thee in the name of Jesus. So everything <clears throat> that he's doing or everything that they do is exalting the name of God and not themselves. However, they are also showing us that these are examples to live by. You know, suppose, I mean, look at it this way. Suppose, and this is not what is there, but then I, I'm just thinking, and this is just, I'm just thinking loud. Suppose all of scripture was written and said, you know, God did this, God did this, or, you know, God showed miracles, but they did not bring about the names of any people who were used as vessels. You and I reading it today will be wondering, you know, how did this happen? How did this, how did this go about, right? So uh, these are examples for us to know that when we yield ourselves to God, he begins to use us and completely brings glory to him. So this is not a self-glorification, but these are accounts of what has happened in scripture so that you and I can learn that just like Paul and Peter and Philip who depended on the power of the Holy Spirit only can uh, can we glorify God. And so that this is also an example for us to follow that, you know, just like all of them, you and I, although we are who we are, because of the righteousness of God, because of the Holy Spirit within us, we are able to do the miracles or do what God wants us to do, just like they did. But what is what we are talking about is the heart of the matter. What happens? What where is our heart in all of this? Even though we may be doing very many things, it is the only thing that you and God sees is your heart. It probably is not very evident to the outside world, but it's only what is evident to you. So it is something that you have to examine within your heart and to see, God, even as you use me as a minister, maybe I have a name that, that everyone sees, even as you use me as a minister, where is my heart at? Where, uh, where does the glory belong? The glory needs to belong to you. So it is more about what is happening in your heart than what is being you know being promoted outside yeah you may need to tell people that you are running a crusade or you are running a ministry you may need to so, see that so that for logistical reasons people can come into your church and you know um, uh, receive the power of god but at the end of the day it matters as to where your heart is and and it's more a self examination for where you are at i hope i have answered that yes, question yes, thanks a lot thanks a lot thank you okay Avni, do you have a question? And uh, we could, uh, if it's a quick question, we could take that and close for a break. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, it's not a question. Something that uh, I just wanted to share while you were sharing this and uh, keeping brother's question in mind. In Matthew 25, this word often is reminded to me in where Jesus, when he is uh, talking to those on the right hand, he says, I was hungry, you gave me food. And these people are asking Jesus a question, Lord, when did we do that? And that uh, is such a beautiful uh, depiction, like they didn't even know that they were doing it with the right intent to glorify God and they did not recognize or account it to themselves and Jesus is appreciating them and saying inherit the kingdom. And that is uh, something just wanted to share. I don't know if it is relevant or not, but this came to my heart that this uh, is what Jesus desires of his people to be, uh, you know, walking in the kind of life that he would appreciate at the end of the day. Thank you, ma'am. Absolutely relevant, Avni. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I think threw a lot of light on, uh, on that question. 
Thank you. Thank you. All right. We'll just uh, close for a for a 10 minute break. It's 1055 on my clock. We will resume back at 115. We'll meet you soon. <laughs>